Hey y'all, thanks for joining us for another week at the Hyatt house. It's a new week, but we are still using the cherry picker. Um, we have made it all the way down to the front porch. We have almost got the whole house primed. Um, and then we've got a little bit of the trim up top already painted with the final coat. And we are so close to being ready to put some color on that siding. So, um, she looks awfully pretty in white, but she's going to look even better with a little, just a little hint of color, nothing too bold or dark. So, um, hey, stay tuned this week and see what we accomplish. Okay, we finally, finally got some beautiful weather. We got everything covered with one coat of primer. And now we are finally putting a little bit of color up there. I don't know if you can see um, just to the right of that window and the dormer to the right, the, the right side of that dormer have the first coat of the final paint on it. And I love it. It is just a really pale, pale, but not minty green. And I'm very excited. I've got one man on the other side and he is doing the first coat of trim paint, going over the primer with our trim paint. And these guys are painting away on the dormer. We are finally getting some color on this anemic beauty exciting things happening this afternoon over at the Hyatt House. Um, our, one of our local historians and drone aficionado um, has come over and he's getting some drone footage of the Hyatt House. So hopefully you'll see that soon. That's even higher than I went in the cherry picker. It's way up there. There's the color. It's very, very subtle. Um, I just wanted something that was really going to make how pretty the trim on this house is pop. And I'm very pleased. Look at that color going on. Um, I can't recall if I've told you or not the saga of trying to find the right color. Um, in fact, why don't we back up and I'll show you a little bit of all the many colors I tried. If you're local, you've driven by and seen a lot up there. So I picked up three sample colors. Normally I get the small samples, but with these supply chain problems, neither Lowe's nor Sherwin Williams had sample colors. So I just broke down and bought a quart. So I've got three colors. I'm going to put them on the wall and we'll see how they turn out. All right, you probably think I'm crazy, but these old houses tell me what color they want to be. And I think this house wants to be green. So we're gonna try some greens and we'll see how they turn out. I like to paint in bright spots and shady spots so that you can see how it's gonna look in all lights. I am at my local Sharn Williams store. I love the guys over here. Um, okay, so I showed you some green paint colors on the house. They weren't right. I tried all three of these. This one I liked, but it's too dark. This one goes too yellow, and this one doesn't have enough green in it. So over the holidays, I was sitting on my sofa, and I saw this little piece of Wedgwood that I love, and I was like, aha, that's the right color. So I brought it in and they scanned this little piece of Wedgwood on this fancy little computer they have. And the computer told us that the color is artichoke. It's the closest color and it is awfully close. When I flip it over, you can see. So I love this color. Do I love it on a house? That I don't know. Now this is the next one on the strip. So I'm actually having them mix me a quart of each of these two. We're gonna head back over to the Hyatt house and we're gonna put a little bit on the walls. We've got the artichoke avocado on the top. On the left is the onyx. And on the right is that one color that I really wanna like it, but it still just goes a little too 
as my carpenter just said, flat. So we are on the mission to find the perfect green for the Hyatt house. These are just some of the colors we've tried. How many have we got there? One, two, three, four, five, seven. Seven greens right here. Um, this one, that's the Sherwin-Williams color of the year and it is way too blue. Um, this one is just, this one right, right there is just way too dark. Um, that one right there is not bad. That one is really pretty sometimes and then other parts of the day it's terrible. So we've narrowed it down to two. There's a whole bunch of other ones on the other side of the house as well. So um, we are down to these two. As you can tell, I've gotten much, much lighter in my selections. So this is actually, these two boards are the darker shade, that's the lighter. Um, it's time to make a decision. Um, so I'm not gonna buy any more. I'm narrowing it down to those two and it's either gonna be ancient marble or what is this one? Grassland. I know which one I'm leaning toward. Stay tuned and see which one we decide. Okay, so that is the saga of how we got to this color. Um, as you can tell, I started out thinking it was gonna be really, really dark. And every time I bought more paint, it got lighter and lighter and lighter. Um, and now this is as light as you can be and not be white. The color is going on. You know, we got the dormers done yesterday. You might notice that the cherry picker's gone. Um, and the guys are working hard. They've gotten all the trim painted on the second story on the front. And now they're working on the color. It is Sherwin-Williams Ancient Marble. Um, and it's just a really nice green, kind of a very, very subtle sage. So, making progress. All right, we are wrapping up another busy day. The guys finished all of that second story over the porch with one coat. I think we've got almost all of the trim done. Check it out, y'all. The whole front and this whole side has its first coat of the final color. Um, I still love it. I hope you guys do too. Hey, um, I love when you guys give me questions. So some of you are asking what kind of paint are we using? Um, why did we prime it? What kind of primer did we use? So um, you saw that the first thing we did was we, um, we um, pressure washed it and then we scraped it and sanded it, replaced any rotten boards that we had um, and then did a lot of caulking. Um, the good thing about because we had gutted the inside, we could see very clearly anywhere that needed caulking. So we did that. Um, now we used an all purpose exterior um, primer. It's I used one, two, three, four. Um, some of you are probably familiar with Kills. It's a similar brand. Um, and so we use that first. It is stain blocking and it also helps um, the paint to stick. It's gonna, it's gonna adhere to this old wood. Um, we sprayed it and then we back rolled. And um, the reason we back rolled is also because this old wood it's not like new wood that you put on today that's just gonna absorb it. It's not just gonna suck it up. Um, so we had to back roll to really get that um, primer to adhere to the wood. So um, I'm using Sherwin-Williams Super Paint for the exterior. It's a good quality um, exterior paint. I did a um, eggshell or a satin actually, a satin on the siding and a gloss on the trim. I'm a big fan of gloss. If you followed the Project Draper on Main, I used a high gloss on the interior trim there. Probably won't do that on this house because it's not really appropriate for the age. Um, and that Super Paint is good because it also has a primer in it. So it is a primer and painter in one. It's not, it's not a primer for, um, 
to like adhere. It's a it's a stain blocking primer. So um, that's just gonna help the um, paint have that true color that we want. So, um, and again, we are back rolling. We're spraying on um, where we spray, we're spraying on and then back rolling to make sure that that paint doesn't just stay on the top, but really goes um, and adheres into um, those wooden boards. All right, so they're painting on the other side. Let's walk around there and see the progress they're making over there. All right, so they're doing the same thing on this side that they did on the other. They are cutting in with their brushes around the trim, and then they're gonna spray the, the main field. Um, spraying goes so much faster, but it is messy, so you gotta cut in. Oh, there we go, we're spraying a little bit up top right now. Paint sprayers are the bomb. Um, I'll show you, we've actually got two. I have one and then the guys have one. Um, there's mine over there. It's a, just a good old Lowe's brand. I call him Picasso cause he's an artist, but he's difficult at times. Um, and then the guys have a, a higher strength, more professional one, but, um, We've been using them both. Picasso is great for trim, but they're using their big guy for the siding. Okay, so I was kidding. They're actually using Picasso, my bad boy. Um, this is just a good old Lowe's brand. Works great with five gallon buckets. Um, this is their fancy one from Sheridan Williams. And you can tell, you can tell who cleans theirs really good when they're done. And I let mine get dirty, but I clean out the guts. But I don't protect the outside. So, um, I know this one is super high end. Picasso is pretty good. Like I said, he's finicky. He's difficult. But, um, I love him. Great investment. So, if you do a lot of painting, interior or exterior, I would check out one of these. So, we can probably file this under things you don't really want to see. But, I happen to be here and it takes a whole team to do a house like this. And that includes Jim's Liquid Waste, who is coming to take care of our facilities. So um, thanks to everybody from dumpster folks to my crew, electricians, engineers, uh, could not do a project of this scale without a whole team. All right, folks, that's pretty much what we're doing this week over at the Hyatt House. We're just painting exterior. Um, I stayed on the ground this week as opposed to last week, but, um, we've got more shots from the sky. So, um, we're going to finish up with the cool drone footage that, um, our friend Ray Midget took for us earlier this week. So before I sign off and show you that, make sure that while you're here, you subscribe, you like, you comment. I'm excited to have you and we'll see you next week. Who knows what we'll be doing at the Hyatt house.